Hi, welcome to Camera Cravings. Hope you're all well. Today I'm going to be doing a Lightroom tutorial looking at how I colour grade from start to finish on a RAW file and yeah, just taking you through the process because this is something that I feel like has changed a lot over time. I was looking back at some of my older images, particularly my landscape photography when I first started out and how I uh, processed things and how I edited them in terms of colour and yeah, it was quite different to how I do things now. It's partly the software has changed. So obviously Lightroom um, CC, which I use now, uh, has been updated quite a bit recently in terms of like color and the features that it has for adjusting color. But uh, it's also just that my the way I, uh, I suppose my style of particularly landscape photography has changed in terms of how kind of vibrant or how subtle I prefer colours. So yeah, without further ado, let's jump on over to the computer and I'll walk you through it. Okay, so this is the image we're going to be using and it's one that I shot a while back with the Sony A7R2 and actually it was with a vintage lens, my Minolta 50mm f1.4. What I really like was the kind of dreamy effect that this lens gave but as you can see there's quite a strong color cast over the image from the sun and what we're going to try and get to is a bit more separation and vibrancy in the colors which is this image and if I just go between the two you can see the difference there's a lot more kind of color contrast and I just prefer the look of that obviously color and um, editing style is personal to you but I'm just going to show you the tools that I use and hopefully it'll be helpful for you so let's get into it let's start with some basic adjustments so I would always go and do the lens corrections and it's showing here the Minolta MC Rokor XPG uh, it's a lens I picked up on eBay for about £50 um, and yeah it gives a really different look to kind of modern lenses uh, when it's adapted onto the Sony's. So yeah, I'd do that and then I would go up and let's start with the white balance. Um, I actually think this is a little bit warm. I'm actually gonna bring it down to kind of more of a daylight white balance, about uh, let's say 5100 for now. And I'm just gonna increase the tint to the magenta side a little bit then I'm just going to add a bit of contrast and I'm just going to drop the highlights down maybe uh, say 40 and then up the whites and always use if you hold the option button on a Mac I think it's alt on a PC you can see um, what it does with the whites being increased and then same with the blacks bring those down just going to raise the shadows a tiny bit and what I'm not going to do is touch the vibrancy or the saturation here because I don't want that kind of global effect really uh, what I'm going to do instead is just the up up the clarity a tiny bit and uh, just do a little bit of dehaze minus just give it a bit more kind of dreamy look maybe minus five so that's that now I'm gonna come down to calibration actually no first I'm gonna just go to the pitch profile so it's Adobe color and it, you can play around with this but I quite like the Adobe landscape just changes the colors a little bit if I just flick back and forth between the two there you can see the difference and now I'm going to go down to calibration and I'm going to have a play around with the kind of saturation and hue in here so one thing I always like to do is with the blues pump that up to let's say 30 35 maybe and then I'm just going to bring the hue down so it gives a kind of more orangey tint. And then the greens, it's quite green in this image. So you can see if you kind of go to the extremes, you can see what it's doing to the image. 
I'm just going to drop it by maybe 10 and then again if we play around with the tint you can see what it does so again I want it a kind of yes less yellow and a little bit more orange so go for something like that and then the reds again you can see the difference you can achieve a lot with this kind of part of the um, processing engine in Lightroom and I have done I think a separate video I'll try and link it uh, on just this tool in particular and with the reds yeah we're just going to do that and then so that's our calibration tool I'm then going to come up to the tone curve and obviously you, you can do your edits in the order you want to do them but this is just how I did it on this image and I'm just going to follow what I did previously so what I'm doing here is just picking points on the sort of tonality graph here really so we've got our highlights up here and as you can see what it does to the uh, highlights on the histogram you'll see to the right side of the histogram if I pull that right up the highlights change obviously we don't want to do that so I'm just going to increase them a little bit and same with the same with the mid tones and then the shadows I'm just going to bring down a tiny bit I'm just going to just bring the mid tones up slightly And then what I'm going to do is come to the HSL panel. Now this is a really powerful tool within Lightroom and it allows you to adjust the saturation hue and uh, luminance. So let's go to the hue first and I'm just going to have a play around and make these reds. As you can see the reds in this image if you go over towards the pink side obviously it's changing the flowers and also the kind of thorn parts of the plant there so I drag that over a little bit let's say minus 35 and then as you can see with the oranges that has a big effect on this image because there's quite a lot of kind of orange and yellow tones in here so again I'm just going to kind of pull that over to the right slightly not much and then I'm going to do the opposite with yellows and with the greens and then with the there's not much blue or aqua in here um, so it's not going to make a huge difference so if you can hear the fans on my iMac whirring up for some reason whenever you do stuff in this HSL panel it really um, kicks up the fans presumably because it's using the GPU and CPU stuff so yeah I'm not going to change the blues much and then similarly the purples and the pinks don't change much but if we uh, just reset the image and then just toggle back and forth you can see already there's quite a big difference to how it looks now the next thing we're going to do is look at the uh, saturation and I just want to change the saturation a bit so I'm going to bring the yellows down because at the moment it's still a bit too yellow for my liking I'm going to bring that right down maybe drop that by say 35 and then same with the oranges I just want I like the orange glow but at the moment it's kind of too overpowering for my liking so I'm going to drop that by 10 the reds I quite like where they are maybe just a little bit extra just to really make that flat the flower petals stand out and then everything else I'm kind of going to leave alone the greens again yeah, it's not a huge difference. You can generally tell 
what the kind of bulk of the colors are in a particular image. And then we're going to go to luminance. And again, I just want to kind of have a play around with this a little bit. So I'm going to go for the reds to start with. And as you can see, that affects the luminance uh, on and the brightness, essentially, on the uh, flower petals there and also on the rest of the plant on the kind of thorns and stuff there so just going to up that slightly just to give that a little bit more maybe 15 and same with the orange I kind of want that glow to come through so I'm going to up that by about 15 as well and the yellows yeah I think everything just needs a little boost here greens let's see what that does it doesn't change a huge amount so I'm just sort of boosting everything slightly and let me just look at yeah I've just gone back to the hue just to have a little fill around with that okay so now we've done that I'm gonna look at color grading and I'm just gonna again You've got the different things here. So you've got your mid-tones, shadows and highlights. And I'm going to start with the highlights. I want those to be a little bit warmed up. So I'm just going to drag that over a little bit um, towards the kind of yellow, yellow orange side. And again, if you know, you can go crazy with this. Like if I drag it right over, you see the difference it makes, but that looks a bit artificial. I just want a little bit of warmth so on the shadows i kind of want the shadows to go to that green side because the kind of leaves of the plant and the shadow are generally in shadow so i want that kind of a greeny blue and what this is doing again is just emphasizing that color separation which is what i want for this image and then the mid-tones i'm actually going to go with a slightly kind of pink almost towards purple but kind of the pink of the of the petals here and that looks pretty good and then I'm just going to add a slight vignette to the image just to darken the corners down a little bit um, and then just feather it out so maybe something like like that and obviously you can adjust where this sits the midpoint of it all that kind of stuff as you wish so that's all that done and then what I like to do is kind of play around a little bit with some more local adjustments so for example this flower is our main subject and I want that to stand out a bit so what I'm going to do is just put a radial filter around that and I just want to brighten that up slightly so if you just click on the inverse that will just do the flower itself and it doesn't want to be too much because it, it will get blown out so maybe point yeah, maybe a third of a stop, roughly. And just drop the highlights slightly. So that is that. And then in terms of the kind of overall temperature, I might drop that just slightly. And I'm pretty happy with that. Obviously, you can play around with it to your heart's content. But I just want to show you the kind of before and after. So that's where we were before. And that's where we've ended up. And you can see the difference. It was quite washed out before. There wasn't much separation in colours. The kind of subject itself the flower didn't really stand out and also i really like the glow we've got from the sun kind of flare coming in on the right 
and yeah i hope, hope you found that helpful as i say th this is something that can be used this kind of workflow can be used on any image and obviously you will use it differently depending on the colors in the image and what you're trying to achieve with the image but i thought this was quite a good example because there was quite a strong color cast and kind of it was a bit washed out to start with so um, another example here is this image that I shot in Scotland and as you can see on the left side is the kind of original raw file and this is how it turned out on the right side and in this particular case I really wanted to make this kind of colourful foliage and the leaves that had fallen on the rock here really stand out and yeah really kind of add to the atmosphere of the the waterfall so that's just another example which shows the kind of power of this kind of workflow okay so i hope you found that video helpful if you did please do drop a like below and comment with anything uh, that you had in terms of questions on that and if you want to see particular videos on Lightroom or Photoshop, um, please let me know down below. Thanks again for watching. As always, it's a pleasure and I look forward to seeing you next time.